Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In this video, we are going to tackle one small part of the mysterious substance that makes up nearly every item, location, and being within the Matoran universe, Protodermis. Protodermis is an artificial atomic element created by the great beings. It comes in so many different forms that it can act as a substitute for pretty much any type of matter you can think of, and can exist in any of the different phases – gaseous, liquid, solid, and plasma. In its liquid phase, Protodermis takes on the role of water within the Matoran universe, and it is this form of Protodermis that we are going to take a closer look at today. The raw form of liquid protodermis is what is most common within the Matoran universe, forming the silver sea that surrounds its various islands and continents. In a clear analogy to real-life seawater, it is described as being a mixture of true, pure liquid protodermis and various impurities. Exactly what these impurities are is never made clear in the canon, though they are almost certainly other types of protodermis that have been mixed in. If raw liquid protodermis is the bionicle analogy for seawater, then pure liquid protodermis is the same for freshwater. In Metru Nui, we see this created in Garmetru, where they take raw liquid protodermis from the Silver Sea and put it through a purification process, removing the impurities and changing the liquid from a silver, translucent one to a clear liquid with a bluish tinge. This purification process was also clearly inspired by real-life desalination techniques used to turn seawater into fresh water here on Earth. The purification chambers used contain two tanks, a main tank and a separation tank, and the process is described as working through rapidly heating and cooling the raw liquid protodermis to remove its impurities. While the canon doesn't ever go into any further detail as to how this rapid heating and cooling works to remove the impurities, we can easily see how it is supposed to work through comparing it to its real-life inspiration. To turn salty seawater into drinkable fresh water, one method is to heat the seawater until it evaporates. The salt within the water gets left behind due to its much higher boiling point, and the water vapour can then be separated and cooled back into pure fresh water in a different container. Like with desalination, the raw liquid protodermis is heated by the Garmatoran until the pure liquid protodermis within it evaporates, leaving the impurities behind in the main tank. This protodermis vapour is then sent to the separation tank to cool and recondense into its pure liquid form, now free from the original impurities. This evaporation of liquid protodermis into vapour can occur naturally too, forming the clouds of the Matoran universe and continuing the water analogy. Where things stray wildly from that comparison to water is when the pure liquid protodermis is sent to Tarmetru and is converted into molten protodermis. The way it is described in the story, the pure liquid protodermis is heated to a high degree until it takes on the properties of a molten metal. This can then be cooled down and solidified into metallic protodermis and used to forge all of the metallic items in the city. This part has never quite sat right with me, as it seems contradictory. We have evidence from the purification process and the clouds of the Matoran universe that liquid protodermis evaporates when heated and then returns to its original liquid state when cooled. Those processes wouldn't work if that was not the case. And yet here we have a clear example of it instead transforming into a metal when heated. How can doing the same thing to the same substance produce two wildly different results? This is further complicated by the fact that unused molten protodermis is just pumped back into the sea, implying that when it cools under these circumstances, it converts back into raw liquid protodermis rather than cooling into a solid metal. What's going on here? Now, of course, the answer is probably just protodermis is magic, don't worry about it. Greg has said that real-world science doesn't apply to Bionicle after all. But this is the Knowledge Tower. Looking at Bionicle through a scientific lens is what we do here. So, is there any way that these discrepancies can be explained without contradicting the canon or real-world science? I think there is, and it all comes down to those impurities within the Silver Sea. Like we covered earlier, we never found out in the canon exactly what those impurities were, but it was safe to assume that they were just some other kind of protodermis. 
If we follow the clear comparison to desalination from the purification process, we can infer that these impurities are either suspended or dissolved in the liquid protodermis and they are left behind when that is evaporated off. Though we also don't know what the garmatorin do with it once it's been separated out. In addition to this, we can also infer that given raw liquid protodermis has a silver colour and purified liquid protodermis is mostly clear, that the impurities are what provide that silver colour. What I'm proposing is this. The impurities within raw liquid protodermis are actually tiny suspended particles of solid metallic protodermis and when separated out during the purification process, it is this leftover material that is sent to Tarmetru to be heated and become the molten metal. This not only solves the mysteries of what the impurities are and where they go after purification, but it also completely solves the issue of protodermis acting differently under seemingly identical circumstances. The purified liquid protodermis turns into vapour when heated, while the metallic protodermis byproduct melts into molten protodermis when exposed to the far more intense heat of the Tarmetru forges, ready to be reforged into masks, tools and any other number of metallic end products. This still fits in with the canon that purified protodermis is what is used to create molten protodermis, from a certain point of view anyway. Both end products are a purified version of raw liquid protodermis. You just get the pure liquid protodermis in one tank, then the pure metallic protodermis in the other. This can also be used to explain how the two products then re-merge back into their mixed state in the Silver Sea. Any pure liquid protodermis produced in Garmetru eventually returns to the sea, diluting and remixing with the raw liquid protodermis there. Any unused molten protodermis is also returned to the sea via Tarmetru, most likely using a method that separates it out into droplets so that they are small enough to become suspended in the sea again once the metal cools and re-solidifies. This action could be performed mechanically, or it could be done via the actions of marine rahi. We already know of rahi that eat metallic protodermis, with the dust darters of the realm of Karzani being prime examples. These marine rahi could consume the metallic protodermis that is dumped into the sea and excrete it as the smaller particles that make up the impurities. There is even already instances of something similar in our own world. For example, the white sand beaches of Hawaii aren't produced through erosion of rock into sand like you would expect, but actually come from the excretions of parrotfish. These tropical fish bite and scrape algae off of rocks and corals using their parrot-like beaks, breaking off portions of the rock and coral as they go. This inedible mass is broken down and ground up inside of their digestive systems and excreted as sand, which eventually builds up into beaches as it moves with the waves. Given that Gali's armour doesn't dissolve away when swimming, we know that metallic protodermis doesn't dissolve when submerged in liquid protodermis. We can therefore say for sure that in order for this theory to work, the metallic impurities cannot be dissolved into the liquid like salt in seawater. Instead, they will need to be held in suspension. Water in the sea, and especially in rivers, is in constant motion, and that motion can keep solids within that water from sinking to the bottom of the waterway, if the solids are small enough. Depending on the size, even a very low water velocity is enough to keep a solid suspended. Let's say that our particles of metallic protodermis are around the size of fine sand, about 0.1 millimetres in size. How high of a water velocity would be needed to keep them in suspension and avoid them settling to the bottom of the Silver Sea? To work this out, we can use this equation, known as Stokes' Law. We will use the density of metallic protodermis that was calculated in the mass of a Toa video, and also assume that liquid protodermis has the same viscosity and density as water. For the purposes of this video, we will also assume that the Matoran universe has the same gravity as here on Earth. This would most likely be different in canon, but until I get around to making a video that goes into the gravity of the Matoran universe in more depth, this will have to suffice for now. All of the numbers needed to complete this calculation are on screen now. Feel free to pause the video if you want and work it out for yourself. If you are anything like me, you'll find it well worth it. OK, let's check our work. By plugging the numbers into the equation like so, we get a minimum velocity of approximately 0.9 centimetres per second. That's a pretty low speed. Ocean currents here on Earth tend to range from as low as 2 to 10 centimetres per second in the deep ocean, and up to as high as 250 centimetres per second in surface currents. 
even if the currents in the Silver Sea were on the lower end of this scale, that would still be enough to keep the metallic protodermis particles suspended. So, if this theory is accurate, just how much metal could be extracted per litre of raw liquid protodermis? Well, we actually do have a possible way to calculate that, and it hinges on the description of the Silver Sea being half clear. In the real world, the measure of the clarity of a liquid is known as its turbidity. If a liquid is clear, like say a glass of water from the tap, then it has a low turbidity. Whereas a liquid that is clouded by suspended particles within it, a cup of tea for instance, has a high turbidity. Turbidity itself is measured in units called nephilometric turbidity units, or NTUs. Anything below 5 NTU appears clear to the human eye. At around 55 NTU, a liquid will start to appear cloudy, whilst any liquid over 500 NTU will appear completely opaque. Given that the Silver Sea is described as being half clear, let's estimate it has a turbidity of around 250 NTU. NTU are directly related to the amount of suspended solids within the liquid, with 3 NTU representing a concentration of 1 mg per litre. At a turbidity of 250 NTU, that would give the Silver Sea a concentration of suspended metallic protodermis particles of approximately 83 mg per litre, which, admittedly, is pretty small. To put it another way, in order to get one kilogram of metal for export to Tarmetru, the Garmatorin would need to purify 12,000 litres of liquid protodermis, or around 10 six-person hot tubs worth. That is a lot of purified liquid protodermis for such a small amount of metal. But given the way that industry is set up in Metronui and the relative demand for each substance, I still think it makes sense. While Garmetru would export this metallic protodermis exclusively to Tarmetru, the liquid protodermis would be used in far larger quantities across the whole city. After all, liquid protodermis is needed to fill the chute and canal systems, is used to provide drinking water for the Matoran, and its flow is even needed to generate power in the Colosseum. Canon sources also suggest that the purified liquid protodermis is largely only used once and is returned to the sea after leaving these systems. Whereas, given the Tarmatoran are shown to recycle metallic protodermis wherever possible, they would likely be far more conservative with their resource, only letting it flow back out to the sea if their storage tanks were over capacity. Of course, this is just one possible explanation for the discrepancy in how liquid protodermis behaves when heated. However, I think that it is a neat and easy solution to the problem, and one that also solves the twin mysteries of what the impurities in raw liquid protodermis are, and where they go after purification. But what do you think? Do you like this theory? Are there any others you can think of that could explain these mysteries? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you again soon for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower. Wow, that was a lot of saying protodermis over and over. Okay.